Good morning. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we welcome all of you here today as we gather as God's people in this place. You may be seated. First of all, thank you everyone for an incredible Easter weekend together. It was wonderful celebrating so much and it felt so good to be just felt alive and uh, so grateful for that. We want to thank uh, this morning all of the volunteers who delivered all of the flowers to all of our shut-ins and it was really warmly received. We've had so many phone calls and I know we're going to get so many letters back and it's so nice to be remembered by your church and I think it's one thing we do really well. So thanks for that. Also, I want to... um, Highlight on Tuesday evening, the Christian Development Committee will be meeting to continue our planning into the summer and uh, highlight to that to everybody who takes part in that good work. On Friday, we'll be worshiping at Royal Court and Monarch Hall and two different experiences of worship you couldn't find. It's uh, One group is just kind of up in the chapel on the sixth floor and then the other group are all in their wheelchairs and they're shouting at me. So they're feisty. But I love them both, and uh, if that's something you'd like to attend or just be part of, let me know, and I can, we can find out ways to do that. So thanks. Also, we are having our silent auction. We appreciate your donation of any items in good working condition that will attract bidders, handcrafted items, needlework, paintings, china, furniture, anything that you have that's collectible that maybe has lived with you long enough, and uh, the dates are there and the times in which you can do all those things. I'd like to welcome Sue now. Good morning, everyone. I'm not just showing off my new hip here. I'm uh, here to actually draw your attention to page seven of the small novella that is our bulletin this morning. Um, We're going to have a soup luncheon next Sunday after worship and uh, at the time where we have coffee and conversation usually. Uh, The cost is uh, $10 per person and children under 12 will eat free. Uh, The choice of soup will have a chicken vegetable and a hearty vegetarian option as well with uh, crackers, tea biscuits, and, and or bread, and squares, and cookies for dessert, coffee and tea. Uh, there will still be, as you see, coffee and tea, so uh, uh, come on down and join us for the conversation part if you're not even taking part in the soup. The proceeds from this are going towards the St. John's Organ Fund. Uh, we have some repairs on that machine, and uh, any additional donations would also be a welcome. Um, if you don't mind, if you know that you're going to be attending, could you please sign up on the, on the list there at the doors? Uh, so we'll have an idea of numbers. But if on the day you feel moved, just come on down because we'll have a bit of extra. So look forward to seeing you next Sunday at church and after church. Thanks, Sue. And a reminder that today is the annual meeting, and if you'd like to grab a cup of coffee and come into the sanctuary immediately following that, then we'll have our time together. This is just a meeting to receive reports and to hear of the work that happened in 2023, and it uh, will follow a steady order. There will be no new information received at that meeting, so everything that's, that's going to happen is already planned out, and we thank you for everyone's attention to detail. Please join me in our call to worship. As we join in worship this day, we might feel like the disciples overwhelmed by grief. After all, the state of the world is so uncertain now. But our resurrected Christ comes to us, saying, Peace be with you. We might feel like Thomas, looking for physical signs that the unbelievable could be true. After all, nothing like this has ever happened before. But our resurrected Christ comes to us, saying, Here are the marks on my body. Can we really believe that Jesus is here again? Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit on us. Christ's peace is with us. We don't need to be afraid. Our resurrected Christ calls us to worship, and we receive the peace of Christ. Let us worship with joy. Alleluia. Our opening hymn this morning is number 389, God is Here.
Let us pray together. Resurrected Christ, you have taught us how the unbelievable can be possible. When there is so much to fear in the world, we can find peace in your presence. As we worship, breathe your spirit on us, that we may carry it with us. Help us comfort our neighbors. Help us serve a world of need. We pray this with thanksgiving for your work among us. Amen. And we continue in prayer. God, we confess that we too might be like Thomas. As we are overwhelmed by the world's grief, it's natural for us to be cynical. It's hard to believe that hope is possible when hope is hard to find. But when we stop believing in hope, we also stop believing liberation can be possible. When we stop working to tear down injustice and discrimination, we stop others from experiencing the peace we have found in you. Forgive our unbelief calm our fears, and help us to be instruments of your peace. Beloved, Jesus comes to us with grace, telling us we can believe. Because we believe, we can also be empowered to do the work of justice. Yes, the world is heavy. No, the work will never be done. But because we know Christ's peace, we can share it with others. We believe in the grace and peace of Christ. We are forgiven. Hallelujah. Jesus has empowered us with the Holy Spirit. We have life because of his presence with us. We join in God's abundance, giving what we can to offer peace to a hurting world. We give thanks for the offering that has been received at the entrances to the sanctuary, for those who have donated online and through par and through the mail. And we will bless it now. Let us pray. God of the resurrection, help us use these gifts to offer hope where there is sorrow, peace where there is chaos, and love where there is fear. We can do incredible things because your spirit lives within us. Amen. I walked into the office today and there was a card waiting for me in the box and I opened it up and it was someone who had attended Good Friday who forgot to place their offering and sent it into the church later. I was so grateful. <laughs> the little things. Let's remain seated as we sing this hymn with our young people. True faith needs no defense from more voices. The words are printed in the program.
any of the young kids present want to come down in the front, we can have a conversation together. Hello. I remember a time when I was little and I was in church and they were telling us this story and um, there was these moments where everybody was talking and stuff and so the person that was, the big person that was talking was saying this and that and this and that and this one little boy kept asking questions and the teacher said, wow, you sure do ask a lot of questions, don't you? And guess which little boy grew up to be the minister? (laughs) I never forgot that. It's kind of like, you know, questions were kind of annoying her a little bit, and she was trying to do a job. But I think, I think, myself personally, that the best thing you can bring to church are questions. Things that you wonder about, about the world. Not just the Bible, but about why does the world work the way it does? And should it work the way it does? And does it always have to work that way? Or things that we're wondering about where we have a question about God, maybe. Like a big question, or even just a little question. Can God be in a dandelion? Can God be in a bee? Can God be in all of the faces that we see around us? There's always great questions. And sometimes we think that you have to believe a certain thing, or you have to know certain things, but you don't. You're the best you that you could ever be. Isn't that great? Just as you are. And you can ask all the questions you want. And you can find ways. And you know what? Sometimes the best answer to a question is, I don't know. I know someone who went to a doctor recently, and the doctor said to them, I don't know. Which might be a great answer from a doctor, too, because then they can help learn it together, right? So, so when you go to school, do you ask questions when you're in school? Sometimes, yeah. Church should be the same. And so Sonia is going to be with you. You can ask her all the questions about God that you want, okay? <laughs> Sonia's like, anyway, so, but the thing is that we're all together and we're all learning together. And sometimes we think that we stop learning after we stop being a kid. And that's not true. We're always learning whether we're nine years old or 95 years old. We always have something new to learn. And I love that. It's always amazing. So I hope that when you go into the world, you just look around you, and you look at the the trees and nature, and you wonder about things, or you see people from different cultures and wonder about things, or you see um, maybe things that just make make your heart break a little bit, and you wonder about that too. Because it's okay to ask hard questions, right? Like, why is there pain in the world? Or why, is there people, why do people suffer? And things like that. But we can also ask questions um, uh, about what, what is it so, what's so wonderful about joy? What is it that we can do more of, of that, too? So I want to uh, just thank you all for, for being you and for seeing the world that you, the way you see it and for sharing that part of you, okay? Let's have a prayer. Dear God, thank you for giving us questions. May we feel free to always ask them. Amen. Thank you. I always think of this woman years ago that I used to go visit, Georgie McDonald, who told me that she prayed every night, but she stopped getting down on her knees because she couldn't get back up. That's how I feel.
first scripture reading is Acts 4, verses 32 to 35. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses, sold them and bought the pro- brought the proceeds of what was sold. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. And our responsive reading is Psalm 16 on page 738 of Voices United. Protect me, God, O God, for you in you I take refuge. I have said to God, You are my God, for you alone comes all my prosperity. But as for those who run after other gods, their troubles shall be multiplied. You, God, are my allotted portion and my cup. My boundaries enclose a pleasant land. I will thank you, God, for giving me counsel. I keep you always before me. So my heart is glad and my soul rejoices, for my body shall always rest in safety. You will show me the path of life. This is a reading from John's Gospel, chapter 19, verse, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of the authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now, Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you've seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So the next hymn we're going to sing is number 170, but there are two different sets of words. Um, O sons and daughters, let us sing. And we're going to sing the words in the next page that are for Easter. Uh, You'll see it when you open the book. It's actually on page 171, the words.
Let us pray. Oh God, some of us are here to try to shake off this last week, to summon up the courage to face another week. There are so many things that ask so much of us, and we gladly give, but there are times when we need sanctuary. There are times when we need to simply be And there are times when we need to feel your spirit fill our hearts because the world takes so much. But as your people, we are called to stand in those places. So we give thanks for the gathered community that encourages each other to be who we are in the world around us. So in this church this morning, may your spirit open our hearts to new insights, new ways to love, new ways to care even if that means caring for ourselves. Amen. There's a moment in Matthew's Gospel that takes place when Jesus is crucified, where where it says Jesus gave up his spirit, and when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And at that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom, the earth shook, The rocks split and the tombs broke open. According to the United States Geographical Survey, a 4.8 magnitude quake isn't large enough to cause damage, except for some minor effects near the epicenter. So no no torn curtains, no split rocks, no dead people walking through the streets of New York, unless it's people going to work on Monday morning. Of course, not only was I noticing the scientific response, to this, but the theological responses too. Given that we will experience a solar eclipse tomorrow, the rapture-ready Christians were out in droves with their theories. Apparently this solar eclipse will overlap the last solar eclipse so that it will form a cross. So just in case, following the annual meeting, we will be having rapture practice out in the parking lot. (laughs) There will be lots of jumping up and down, so bring sneakers just in case we get zapped up into heaven but I have my doubts. Which really is what part of this morning is all about, having our doubts. Doubt is an essential part of our faith. I quoted it last week, and I will quote him again this week, Presbyterian preacher Frederick Beekner, who said that if you do not have doubts, you're either kidding yourself or you're asleep. It's near impossible to go through life with eyes wide open without experiencing moments of disorientation, Last Sunday, my good friend, the Reverend Neil Ellis, was in church. Neil is a Presbyterian minister. I asked him how it felt to worship in the United Church on Easter Sunday, and he said, it was just like our church, and you even quoted a Presbyterian. I blame Reverend Mel for the recent increase in Presbyterian content here at St. John's. The truth is, we're more like Thomas than we may want to admit, or conversely, we're relieved that someone like Thomas can stand in the same room with all of those devout disciples and say, I need more proof. I think it's important to pause here and say that these people have been through a lot together. They've seen and done amazing things, and when there was one more amazing thing to see and do, all of it wasn't enough for Thomas to just take them at their word that Jesus had been back. But here's the important part for me. Peter doesn't rebuke Jesus. Peter doesn't rebuke Thomas. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, the sons of thunder, don't ask for God to rain down fire on Thomas. Philip and Andrew don't gang up on him and say, whoa, Tommy, that's blasphemous. They all just keep being together and sharing in their bewilderment and processing the events of the last few days. And knowing what we know now, I'm sure there was some PTSD kicking in as they watched in horror as their friend and rabbi died. In fact, most of us find Thomas refreshing. Now, I know there's some among you who are very much like Thomas. You pray the prayers, you sing the songs, you make your offering, and you're baffled by all of this, but you're drawn just enough to it, which is really sort of wonderful if you ask me. Just standing there with your hymn books open, not believing a word of it, listening to scriptures that make no sense at all, you and Thomas can share a hymn book today. Because the doubt means you've engaged, you're here, you're wondering, You're thinking, you're asking, you're feeling what it is to have faith. 
And that means just more than digging your feet into the ground and mocking all of it, or at the end of the spectrum, becoming such a believer that anyone who doesn't believe what you believe is going to hell. That leads to a fundamentalist thinking that leaves no room for Jesus to appear in the room because you've taken care of all of it. And when he shows you his scars, you're so close to the scars of others that you can't see the wounds in front of you, that you can't see the beloved child of God in front of you because you're so ramped up on your own stuff that you've closed your heart to who Jesus might choose to appear to. And here's the good news, for me at least. We don't get to choose to whom Jesus shows his wounds. Nor do we know when that will happen, but I'll say this, it happens in God's good time, not ours. We can get all excited about earthquakes and solar eclipses. However, I've noticed in my lifetime that the grace of God and the glory of God tends to sneak in past the closed doors. Now, I know a lot of people like to see that, say that they see God in sunsets, but I find that boring. Like, what about the God who is present to you as you watch your loved one inhale their breaths? Inhale, exhale, the God between the breaths. Or what about the God who is with you as you go to get your blood taken for blood work, and in that moment, just as you're about to be cared for in that way, God is present as the needle touches your skin. Or what about the moment you took to read a good book or a textbook or the Bible or something that stops your brain and captures your heart and you feel the depth of life that moment? Or what about the God made manifest in the hundred plates of food served each day from the caring kitchen? What about the God made known in Jesus Christ and justice initiatives across the world where a woman is given a small interest-free loan by an aid organization so that she can buy a sewing machine and start her own business? What about the God made known as people protest for an end to war and the return of hostages? There are days, I will admit, when I can't see God at all. When my soul has grown so small, my hope has diminished, and the light that is within me cannot connect with the light of the world. Other times, I can see God all around me. Now, I don't come to church looking for perfection. I don't come here thinking that the music or the preaching will always be excellent, or that the church will be full, or that the cracks in the ceiling will ever go away. In fact, I hope they don't. I want to enter into an upper room of imperfect people in an imperfect place, where we're all quite, not quite sure of what to think, where we need to retreat from the world for a little while and remember that time that Jesus washed our feet and said to serve each other. Or remember that time when he broke bread and gave us some wine and he said, just remember me when you do this. In one of his final moments with his friends, he makes this comment that those people who haven't seen him yet believe are blessed. But here's the thing. I think we have seen. I think we have seen Jesus. I think that people who have been part of this church for almost 200 years would say the same thing. People haven't been coming here that long because the tea is good. Coffee's not bad. People haven't brought their babies here to be baptized or to come here to bury their loved ones because the windows are nice. They've come here and you are here because at some point when the world didn't make sense, this did. Or because your heart was broken into pieces, Jesus showed you his wounds and touched yours as he invited Thomas to touch his, and you fell in love with that story. And you found a home in your soul with that story, because it made sense. Despite our best efforts sometimes to lock the doors of our hearts, despite all we do to close our hymn books and Bibles and say, enough, it's nonsense, it's not making a difference, the one who appeared that day in the upper room, though the doors were locked, the one who breathed on the disciples in their fear and in their confusion and said, peace. The one who laid his life down for his friends only show us how to live. will always find a way in. And when he does that, he'll show you his side. And he'll show you his hands. And he'll say that if you want to follow him, it's okay for you to be wounded too. It's okay not to be perfect. It's okay if you've done something you're not proud of. It's okay that you're carrying a weight and you feel like you're alone, but you don't have to carry it alone anymore. Those things don't define you anymore. He does. And when he looks at Thomas, he doesn't see someone not worthy of love. In fact, Jesus goes out of his way to assure Thomas that it's him. He wants Thomas to behold him. 
In her book, Leaving Church, Episcopal priest Barbara Brown Taylor says, Christian faith seemed to depend on beholding things that were clearly beyond belief. I wanted to be out of the belief business and back to the beholding business. I wanted to recover the kind of faith that has nothing to do with being sure what I believe and everything to do with trusting God to catch me, though I'm not sure of anything. Jesus caught Thomas. Jesus catches you and I. Douglas John Hall says that in our time, religious faith has come to mean intellectual certainty. Christian faith has come to mean believing certain ideas about God and Jesus to be true. But faith, Hall and others are teaching, is more a matter of trusting. Christian faith is more a matter of trusting Christ, of following Christ, than believing ideas about Christ. So now what? What do we do? The point here is to get the people out of that room. The point here is to give them enough peace, enough spirit, enough life and breath to get them up and moving again. The point here, the point of Easter, is to get the frightened, discouraged men and women who are very much inclined to stay put, to stay in the room as long as necessary, to get them up and moving towards the door, towards the streets of the city, towards their homes, their families, and the community, and the world around them, Toward, that is to say, life in this beautiful world now suddenly and dramatically different because Jesus has come to them and breathed on them. You know, we don't walk into that room one by one. We walk out together. We walk out together. We sing to each other every Sunday. We sing each other home at the end of our lives. And just like we will leave this church today and go back into the world knowing that Christ has risen and, Christ has risen and love wins, this isn't a naive statement. This is our testimony to the light, that while there are places and spaces in this world where evil dwells, where injustice permeates the hopes of the world, where children lay under rubble, we cannot avoid those places. In fact, the risen Christ calls us to go there. Remember, it isn't accurate to say, where there is Christ, there is no suffering, but rather it's true to say, where there is suffering, there too is Christ.
Let us pray. God of resurrection, you are the resilient one we follow. We follow you because you're good, compassionate, slow to anger, and bounding in love. You prove to us time and time again that your love never lets go of us. Jesus is on the loose, which means your love is on the loose. May your love give us resilience in the pain we endure. May your love and comfort give us resilience in these divided times. It is so easy for us to contribute to chants of division and hate, but your love is on the loose. So grant us the wisdom and courage to act with love for our neighbor. God of resurrection, in our despair, you offer us hope. We pray for those who feel overwhelmed by life's burdens, for those struggling with illness, for those facing financial hardship, for those struggling with mental health. May your resurrecting power bring light into their darkness, comfort into their pain, and hope into our despair. In moments of loneliness, we turn to you knowing that you are always near. We lift up those who feel isolated and forgotten, those who long for companionship, community, and connection. May your resurrecting presence bring forth communities of support and friendships that nurture and sustain. Amidst the grip of poverty and hunger, we cry out for justice. We remember those who lack the basic necessities of life, those who are marginalized and oppressed. May your resurrecting justice break the chains of inequality and empower us to work towards a world where all are fed and valued. In the face of hatred and war, we seek reconciliation and healing. We grieve for the wounds caused by hatred and war. May your resurrecting love shatter the barriers that divide us and inspire us to actively pursue justice and equality. So today, we give thanks for the places where we have witnessed resurrection. In the beauty of springtime, we see the promise of new life and growth. In the embrace of family and those like family, we experience the love that binds us together. In the waters of the baptism of a child, we're reminded of your grace that washes over us. And in the acts of love shown through community, true community, we catch glimpses of your kingdom here on earth. So God of the resurrection, may your love continue to be on the loose. May your loving spirit continue to breathe new life into the broken places of our world and into our, into our own hearts. And may we be agents of your power of resurrection, bringing hope, healing, and reconciliation as we are able wherever we go. Wherever your love is, we will try to follow. We pray this in the name of Jesus, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I just want to remind you of the friendship group on Tuesday afternoon at 2 o'clock. That seems to be a great energy in that group, and you're all invited to be... It's a brand new group, so don't feel like you... There's all kinds of things that have happened before you got there. Uh, Before we leave today, I want to uh, commission us for the annual meeting by sharing together the United Church Creed on page 918. I'd ask you to stand and um, remain standing, but that's after the hymn, number 614.
Please turn in your hymn book to page 918. Nine one eight. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Thank you all for being here today and sharing in this time of worship. May you go forth into the world with a sense of renewal and refreshed in your spirit. Beloved, go in peace and go be peace. Receive the Holy Spirit deep in your being and share your new life in Christ with the world. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with each and every one of you this day and forevermore. Amen.